Hello, and uh, this is Blackout. I'm Meatloaf, and we welcome you. Uh, Vita Zane, Andy. <laughs> Hello, Meat. It's nice to meet you in our Blackout show. Guten Abend, ich begrüße euch recht herzlich. Vita Zane is goodbye. Yeah. Oh, how do you say you're welcome? I mean, how do you say hello? Hello. Guten Tag. Oh, guten Tag. Start again. Boy, am I dumb. Oh. Ah. Guten Tag, Andy. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Meet. It's nice to meet you here in our Blackout Show. Hallo, liebe Zuschauer. Ich begrüße euch hier wie immer um 20 Uhr zur Blackout Time. Heute hier bei mir in der Show live Meet Love. Meet Love ist hier gerade in Frankfurt und produziert hier ein Album mit dem Frank Farian. Da werde ich jetzt mit ihm äh, näher drüber sprechen. Und äh, danach gibt es 60 Minuten nur Meat Love, Mat äh, Material aus der ersten LP Bad Out of Hell und ein paar Videoshots aus der zweiten LP, die 1981 released worden ist, die LP Dead Ringer. Meat, there was a big legend, your first release, uh, The Bad Out of Hell. Until now you are in the chart uh, in England and in America. It's very amazing because not so many uh, artists or musicians uh, are so long in the charts. How you... What do you think, why, uh, why you stand so long in the charts? Uh, defective records? I don't know. I don't, people keep returning their records. I don't know. Um, well, in 19, when we were doing the album, um, I remember 1974, because we really started on the album in 1974, Bad Out of Hell. In 1974, I was working with a guy named Jim Steinman, who's gone on to do uh, oh, a song by Bonnie Tyler, Total Eclipse of the and uh, Air Supply making love out of nothing at all and, and uh, did uh, movies, um, oh, I forgot the name of the movie, uh, Streets of Fire oh. and things like that. And um, 1974 on this album, and I remember uh, coming to me and, and uh, I sort of, he came to me and played me songs and then I sort of had to force him into doing it, you know. Uh, and I don't know, it, um, It, uh, to me, it, it wasn't different. It was just me, and I guess I was different, and Jim was different. But it was sort of had the the basics of, uh, to me, the Who and uh, the Tubes and and uh, uh, people like that, because that's who I knew. And and since then, people have called, compared it to Springsteen, but I didn't know Springsteen or any of his music when we were doing it, when we were putting it together. Didn't have any. I didn't know anything. In fact, the first Springsteen record, Born to Run, I, I would never listen to. I couldn't stand it, you know. Now I, now I like it, but I couldn't at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, I don't know, it was just, it was different in 1977 for its time. And I was real different, and I was real anima animated and, and uh, you know, uh, sort of a colorful character. Meet on the album Bad Out of Hell. You was the one who was writing all the songs, or there were some other people involved? No, on, on Bad Out of Hell, uh, Jim Steinman wrote the, wrote the songs. Um, I, I wrote a lot in the early 70s. I wrote for The Temptations, and I wrote for Edwin Starr. I was doing a lot of Motown stuff. But when I met Jim, I thought he was a better writer than me. And uh, he, he really uh, could turn a good phrase. So I fed him a lot of ideas. and. Uh, made him work real hard like on Bad Out of Hell. He brought me the song and I said it wasn't finished. So he kept working on it. On Paradise with the Dashboard Light, I sit in the car in front of his apartment mm -hmm. for a whole hour giving him the story of the song Paradise with the Dashboard Light. And uh, he went and wrote it, which was a lot easier than me going home and writing it. You know, a lazy man's writer. I, uh, and he put the lyrics on. Yeah, and then I changed lyrics. You know, I mean, I would change lyrics and uh, Uh, like Two Out of Three Ain't Bad, which was on Bad Out of Hell. We didn't have any lyrics for it, and he was just playing the piano, and I walked upstairs in the studio in uh, Bearsville, and I just sang the first verse, just came off the top of my head, and then he wrote it from there. And, um, I mean, I don't know, I just sang words, you know, baby, we can talk all night. And then it just kept going, and he goes, oh, that's good, and then we kept going. It's just like he shake it out, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's great. I mean, I mean that. Uh, I think that is uh, the easiest way to do it. You get the best. Uh, um yeah, on the on uh, on the record I'm doing now uh, with Frank Farian, because um, I was writing a lot. I've I I've written a lot of songs, but I'm not using them all. Uh, some other people are using them. Uh, John Parr and uh, and different people. Um, 
But I remember one morning I got up, I all, I'm very regimented with writing. I get up in a state, I get up at like 7.30 in the morning, and I never get up at 7.30 in the morning anytime <laughs> except when I'm writing. And I go in and I start. And this particular morning I couldn't, there was nothing happening, so I was watching a movie. And in the movie there was a line, uh, well, how about just one kiss for goodbye? And I said, oh, there's a song there. And it came up to be a song called Night of the Soft Parade. And Night, of the, Night of the Soft Parade, but everybody wants me to change the name of the song to One More Kiss, Night of the Soft Parade. Um, so we do that, but that, that, and then other things I'll work on for months and months and months, and some things I'll work on and go like that in an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, so never, you never know about things like that. Uh, from where you get all your impressions for to write a song down? Just from movies or you go out on the streets and... To, to get an adventure or to, yeah, to watch other I, people. I wish I, I wish I was like I wish I'd have been in the same place that Mark Knopfler was for Money for Nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, Money for Nothing. He yeah. was in a he was in a store in New York called Crazy Eddie's, and he overheard this conversation about they were watching MTV in America, and these guys were going. Yeah, the chicks are for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, look at these guys. Uh, you know, money for nothing, chicks for free, man. You know, uh, and he he heard it and he just stood there and he listened. That was a great thing. Um, yeah, you get some stuff from the streets. Um, mostly I just get it from my imagination. And I, I watch a lot of films. Like I wrote a film once, uh, not a film, I mean I wrote a song once called Magical, which was a, a last year a hit in the United States for John Parr. And uh, it was about, <laughs> it was about uh, two girls. One was a virgin, and they were talking about, when, you know, I was talking about that. So it was pretty interesting. I mean, I just write about weird things, you know. And uh, I always have, um, whenever I write, they're double meanings. It's like I have a song on this record now that we're doing called Blind Before I Stop, mm -hmm. which uh, nobody, n n English don't know the phrase and Germans don't know the phrase, but it's a very American phrase about Blind Before I Stop. It has to deal with what uh, uh, boys do and, uh, and, and their parents tell them, if you don't stop that, you <laughs> so I think you can probably read between the lines on that. So, I mean, let us talk about a little bit why you are here now in Germany. I, and I've got the right news, you are here that, since January. And yeah, you're January the 18th. The 18th. And you're working now with Frank Farron. That is a very amazing story because Frank comes from the disco and pop mu musician scene. He was very successful with uh, Bonnie M. How is the work that you're now uh, making a production with him? Oh, well, I heard... Um I heard this thing, Stairway to Heaven. From the Far Corporation? Yeah, from the Far Corporation. I, I heard it in New York. Mm -hmm. And I heard it on a horrible system. You know, little speakers that were distorting and, oh. and but it was unbelievable. And I said, who is this guy? Because it was real, it was, uh, and they had taken Stairway to Heaven, which in America is like this sacred song. You know, I, I never liked Led Zeppelin personally. But they, um, uh, they've taken this song, you know, and, uh, and did something to it that, uh, it's like taking a Beatles song and making it, you know, good. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, like Jackson, he bought all the rights. Yeah, the yeah. Beatles well, song. Joe, the only pe person that I've ever known that did a Beatles song was uh, Joe Cocker, a little help from my friends that really worked, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so he took this and it, and it was amazing. So I was looking at, at the credits to see who had done what. And there was a guy uh, uh, who's Swedish but lives in Munich and, and uh, all these guitar players and the, the Jackson Choir and all these people on it. And I said, that's a, and its drums were amazing and it was, you know, and all the, you know. One of the famous German drummers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, well, Kurt played on my last record, Bad Attitude, because Mac, uh, I was working with Mac in Munich on the last one. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so... Uh, I don't know, I just said, well, let me meet, I want to meet him. You want to meet him? I want to meet him. And you was the one who called him, or Frank was calling you? No, no, we, I called Frank. Ah, you called him. Yeah. Um, but we came to, we came in Berlin to talk to some other people, and I went into Munich to talk to some people, and I came into Frankfurt, and we were talking to people in London, and I was talking to people in the States. And I was talking to the guy who produced Heart, and I was um, uh, talking to, oh, uh, a guy named Lance Quinn, yeah, who produces the Hooters, and, um, and uh, I was talking to oh, a lot of people, and uh, a lot of people wanted to do it, and a lot of people liked what I had, the material. Uh, 
But Frank, I don't know, and even, even the communication problem we have with him not speaking English very well and me speaking no German, <laughs> except I'm learning some now. Uh, I don't know, it was just, there was just something there. But it was real, it was real scary, to tell you the truth, uh, to, to picture myself in Frankfurt, West Germany, for months on months on months. I'm going, you know, because, you know, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's like a, it's a real foreign country. If you go to London, it doesn't feel very foreign. Oh, but yes. when you get into Germany, it's a sure. very foreign country. And, and, and uh, you, you know... But you like Germany? A, yeah, I'm getting to like it a lot now. I'm getting to... That's great. Um, was Frank the one who was writing, so brought some material into, or you make it together? With no, him? no, Frank, uh, Frank didn't bring anything in. Oh, Frank, he just produced it. Yeah, Frank didn't bring anything in. He was, we were going to, uh, stuff that was really good. I, uh, I did a little, I was here for about five weeks, and then I had a, to go to L.A. and did a film. Which did is, a movie? Yeah, I did uh, yeah, another film, uh, which is coming out July 28th in the States. It's called Out of Bounds. Out of bounds. Yeah, and um, it's the uh, how many? It's eighth it movie. Germany also? Uh, I don't know. Maybe don't know so. it's the eighth movie I've done. And um, so when I was there, I, I picked up some more stuff. There was a guy writing with Don Henley, and I picked up a song from him called "Burning Down." His name is Billy Rankin. And um, then I picked up a, a song from a guy named Dick Wagner that used to work with Alice Cooper uh, called "Execution Day." Oh, and I picked up, uh, picked up some L.A. stuff, you know, and brought it back. And uh, plus the stuff I had before, we, we wound up with about 20, I came in with about 22, 23 songs. And we've got it narrowed down now to about 12, which can't possibly go on the record because they're long, you know. Yeah. And uh, so we'll have to see what, what we choose from there. But uh, no, Frank really didn't bring anything. And what, and what Frank is bringing to the record and what I'm bringing to Frank, see, we're giving each other here. I'm giving Frank <laughs> big bass drums, <laughs> killer snare drums, and blah, big guitars. Um, uh, from so it's a rock uh, production. Uh, which yeah, class of music is it? Because it's, it was a little break in your musician career. You know, we don't heard so many things in the last two years or so. And which kind of music is it? It's rock or? Well, it's it's different. It's it's rock, but it's different. It it almost feels like. Uh, it feels different in the way that Bat felt different in 1977. It feels that way. Um, because I've still got the backgrounds, and Frank's great with the vocals. Uh, and Frank's really good. I mean, Frank's just a real good producer. Frank is as good. Frank is one of the... I pick, I pick Frank Farian as one of the big boys, you know? I considered him from his productions and how his things sounded. It's like being in the league of the Steve Lillywhites and the Trevor Horns and uh, those people in the, in the Mutt Langs. Uh, he's as good as any of them, and I know them all. Um, and uh, not quite as temperamental as Lily White, you know, but uh, uh, he's as good as, he's as good as, he's a, he's a big league producer. And uh, he, he, he has the ability to adapt. So I know all this stuff has been, because people were saying to me, oh, he's a pop producer and you're a rock and roll guy. Yeah, because that's what I saw it. How it comes that they could want to work together, you know? Because you're coming from the pop music, you're coming from the real good and uh, melodic rock music. Oh yeah, well that's there. See, that's the thing that he's had to understand because I have so many lyrics, and the lyrics say a lot. We've had to translate lyrics for him, and he goes, "Ah, oh, it's very good," you know. So uh, most of the all the songs have, you know, a real strong lyrically, real, and he really is is hooked on melody lines. See which is real good for me because I've always had good melodies. And uh, so we've picked the songs with the best melodies and, the re and I've got the really good lyrics and we have come up with uh, uh, guitar players out of Germany that are just great. Mm -hmm. Johan, uh, I can't remember his last name, plays with Peter uh, Malley, Peter Ma Ma Maff? Peter Maffay. Yeah, P yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, Peter Maffay is very uh Successful here in uh, yeah, Germany. Yeah, uh, but uh, Johan doesn't play electric guitar too much with Peter. He plays an acoustic, but in this album he plays a lot of electric, and Mott's played guitar, and Mott's is... Mott's Borklin has been on this record all the way through. Yeah, well, funk operation, yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, he's great, and he plays guitar also. Another guy named Peter, but I can't remember his last name, who is incredible, out of Hamburg. Peter. Peter. Plays with Kurt Kress a lot. He's, they have a little tree. 
uh, an English bass player, Kurt Kress, and this guy Peter, this guitar player. I don't remember his last name. I think it's Weir. W-E-I-R. Weir. I don't know. Anyway, oh, he's unbelievable. Yeah, well, I, the thing is, there's, um, in the moment, there are a lot of uh, American musicians or English musicians here in Germany and to make some production. And it's very in in the moment to work with the German Is it musicians. really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't have a clue. In the moment, yeah. <laughs> and the same is in America now. Is the people told so. That a lot of German musicians go over to the States and then work in there, you know? Oh, yeah? And the American like know. it. Too. You don't I, know. Don't know. I don't know that. I don't, I don't pay attention. I never pay attention to what's hip. Mm -hmm. You know? If I'd have known that, I'm... Oh, no, yeah. no. It just... <laughs> it just uh, no. Uh, I didn't know that. But the, everybody's that uh, Frank brings in has been great. I've, ha I've used my bass player, uh, John Golden, uh, from America on the record. Yeah, John I know. Yeah. And I'm John. And, um, uh, and I'm going to bring over my piano player eventually, near the end, and uh, my drummer will come in on a couple of things, but Kurt's coming back as well. That sounds, that's, is that this going to be a big, big production there? Do you know at which time you're going to finish that, or you know the name already from the album? I think the name, well, <laughs> I had two names, and everybody asked me if I was the first one, what it would probably be called is Blind Before I Stop. Mm -hmm. And the other one was, <laughs> the other name was, the other name, you have to do it right, uh, go ahead. Go Call ahead. me fat. <laughs> <laughs> but come on, you lost a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah no, but that was a funny, I like that title. Go, go ahead, call me fat. <laughs> go ahead. I, I like that one. Uh, but everybody else goes, what, what, have you been in Germany too long? That's what they, <laughs> what, have you been overseas too long? What, are you crazy? So it'll you probably. Don't, you don't get junk food here. <laughs> yeah, you do. You get plenty of junk food. Oh, yeah, the McDonald's yeah, and the Wendy's. Rindwurst. But I think you don't. Bratwurst. <laughs> yeah. But I think you are not, more, not so much in, into the food like before, you know? Before. Mm, I, no, I saw really. you got some problems with the doctors and so they said, stop it or you die. Or, no, no, no. No, I'm not. I just. Uh, uh, well, first it started out, I lost weight doing a film. When I was going in to make a movie, I lost about 50 pounds. And then when that film was over, I just uh, lost about, oh, I, used to, I used to weigh about, in, in, in German, about 154. 154 kilos. Yeah, yeah, now I weigh about 115. 115, that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, you work really healthy here. Yeah? <laughs> okay, Meet, and, and I think we'll be going to have video shots from your TV shows and from your video shows and from your live concerts. It was a pleasure for me to have you here oh, live in the show. My pleasure. And I hope this, this production, what you're going to do now with Frank, is very successful. And we wish you all the best. Okay, let's say goodbye. Yo, goodbye. Okay. In the famous words of Mr. T. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. You're Meet welcome. Love.